So thank you so much, Pat, for coming back on the show. No worries. Thank you for having me. (laughs) You're so welcome. I loved our chat last time, our mindfulness chat, and so many people loved it too. So I'm so excited to have you back on and have another chat. (laughs) I'm glad to hear it was well received. uh, Yes, it was. Yeah. Awesome. Well, the topic that we're going to be speaking today is working through difficult times. And at the moment, I'm sure not only us here in Australia, but around the world, we're all living in a very unpredictive time right now. Mm. Um, And I know this is something that you speak a lot about on your social media and you give lots of tips and, you know, ways that people can move through these times. So I'd love to start off the show by... um, our chat talking about what are some of the feelings that you know might be coming up for people during this time Mm. yeah it's a very interesting uncertain and all around the wild time and in times of uncertainty there can be a lot of emotions especially when the uncertainty is ramped up to the degree it's ramped up right now um there's a lot of anger I think we can see that and a lot of frustration at the moment. Like if you just turn on the news or or check your social media feed, you'll find some anger somewhere, especially in the comment section of sort of anything that gets posted these days. And while some of that anger can be justified, like people are doing it very tough at the moment, from what I can see, a lot of it is a projection of a fear or of a grief that we're all sharing that might be unconscious to a lot of us at the moment. And like rightfully so, there's fear of our own health, our own well-being, fear of the health and well-being of loved ones, fear of our rights for some people that they feel are being taken away from them and fear of an uncertain future, which just fosters more anxiety. And when you look at it from a grief perspective, we've lost so much over the last Mm. year and a half, our way of life, our idea of what's normal, um, lost connections with family and friends, even the lost memories we could have made through like birthdays, weddings, events that we no longer have, not to mention the economic loss, the businesses and whatnot. So there's a lot of grief in all of us right now and we need to sort of create that space to feel that fear and grief rather than just going with the easy thing, which is getting angry. Um, Yeah. Because if we don't acknowledge that fear and grief, it'll create more tension in us and more disharmony in us, uh, which can keep us stuck. But if we can look at it and start to create some acceptance around it, we can start to move through it in a very healthy way. But it will take time. Yeah. And this kind of ties into the episode that I had with Tiff when we were talking about emotions and, Mm. you know, working through the emotions, you know, what are they trying to tell us, you know, yeah. um, not working against them. And I feel like, like you said, there's a lot of anger and frustration, but people don't know where it's kind of coming from, mm. <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense. Because um, I know I'm feeling very frustrated. Like this is, I don't even know what lockdown we're in. <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, lost count just, a long time ago. Yeah, I lost count. Yeah. But, it's just more, like you said, frustrating that you try and make mm. plans and then they're yeah. just gone. Just like they're just that. gone, yeah. And that loss of like making a plan and it going away, like that is, that's grief. We don't associate grief with those things. We think it's when like we, we lose a loved one, but there are small grievances that we that occur. And I, I'm with you. I feel that frustration and anger immediately. I feel that first because it's so easy for us to feel that Mm. it's so normal like who hasn't felt frustration through their day we can default to that emotion very quickly and there's comfort in anger Mm. and frustration because we can blame someone else for the problem um and we like doing that it's just human nature i'm not gonna look at my own stuff i'm gonna blame you for it and that makes me feel better about it but like i said if we can start to explore well, what's causing this frustration in me where is this anger coming from and start to look at those emotions that might be under it and if we work with those emotions and collapse those emotions the anger just falls away yeah yeah that's a great way to put it i love that i think yeah even though i'm aware of this stuff i need to practice it a bit more 
because sometimes the, the anger and the frustration, I take it out on the kids or Andrew. And, you know, what are you going to do when you're in lockdown? <laughs> you can't run away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> and, like, I mean, I can't take for everyone, but I'm, I'm sure we're all guilty to some degree yeah. of that. Like, I've done it plenty of times in my life where the immediate response is to go with anger. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of, like, what are some of the ways or the things that we can do to become more aware when these feelings come up for us? Yeah, there's a few steps that we can take. And the first step pretty much centers around the word awareness, which you, which you touched on there. And one exercise that was given to me probably four or five years ago now was the idea of a mindful check-in or an emotional check-in where throughout the course of a day, um, you'll check in with how you're feeling, say, four to six times and actually write down that emotion. So I used to keep a post-it note at my laptop and while I was working, every couple of hours I'd ask myself, how am I feeling right now? Like what's there for me right now? And the beautiful thing of that exercise is you can start to get a better sense of your emotional life. We're experiencing emotions all the time throughout the day and we only ever typically notice it when it hits this real sort of pressure cooker moment when it's at its sort of highest intensity, then we know we're angry or then we know we're scared. But it's been simmering under the surface for a few days. And if we can start to check in with ourselves more regularly and pick up that emotion, we can catch it earlier on. We can catch anger when it's irritation or annoyance and actually work with it before it goes to rage, for example. Mm -hmm. So taking some time. And you can do it at the end of the day, like just journaling on your emotions at day's end can be a way to do this as well rather than doing multiple check-ins through the day. But it doesn't take long just to ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? Perhaps find a specific word for that there and then rate the intensity between 1 and 10 and just notice how that fluctuates through the day. And that builds a lot of self-awareness around how you're feeling. So that would be probably step one um, yeah. with that. And then step two would be to validate whatever you're feeling. Um, it's really easy for people to sort of invalidate the way we feel. We're told not to feel a certain way or we shouldn't feel a certain way, but it's okay to feel however you are feeling. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so being able to validate that yourself and show yourself the compassion and acceptance and understanding for feeling however you feel um, is a really important step. Um, so I think if we can do those two things, awareness and validation, that's going to actually do a lot of good for us. Yeah. Um, oh, please. Yeah, no, I was going to say, like you said, with validation, um, something I'm working on with Leo at the moment because I'm reading this book. I forgot what it was called. I think it's called uh, Learn How to Speak to Kids So they will listen. Anyway, I'll, cool. I'll write it down in the show notes. Anyway, so it's basically saying talk to kids so that they will talk back to you and listen so um, they will listen to you and vice versa. And like you were just saying now before with the validation, we were always grown up like boys don't cry or mm. you're not feeling cold, you're, yeah. you're warm. And I was thinking to myself, oh, my goodness, I do this all the time with the kids. Like when mm. they say, mum, I'm hungry or mum, I'm upset, like I'm telling them how to feel and I'm not allowing them to have that emotion um, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So like you, you, like you just said it before, um, just that validation, you know, allowing yourself to feel that because it's actually okay to feel a certain way. Whereas yeah, sometimes, yeah. like I know, <laughs> even speaking to Leo, I'm telling him how to feel, <laughs> um, which is just crazy. And like I'm, I know that I grew up like that, like, come, well, no, you're not hungry or. Same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I remember being happy and being told to calm down or settle yeah, down. Yeah, calm like, down. Oh, okay. Yeah. I better not be happy then. I'll just suppress my own happiness, I guess, as yeah. a kid. So or we get told these cry. things. Don't cry. Yeah. Or yeah. well, there's nothing to be scared of when you're yes. terrified. So um, yes. we get these conditionings as a kid, which makes it really hard to accept our emotions as they come up. We think something's wrong with us for feeling this way. So even if it makes no sense to you why you're feeling the way you are, like that's okay. Don't worry about trying to articulate it or intellectualize it. Just give yourself that space to go, okay, I feel this way and that's okay. That's completely all right. Because what we can do from this place, 
and like even kids can practice it as well is actually build a relationship with our emotions actually get to know them um and a part of that is actually detaching from the emotion itself and you actually said something um that sparked that in my mind how leo says i'm, I'm feeling this way or i'm feeling that way the words we use when we describe our emotions people often say i am sad or i am anxious and we identify with the emotion mm-hmm. if we become that and it's hard to sort of work with it in that space but like i'm i'm, I'm pat like you're calm well, i'm not sad like i feel sad yeah. i yeah. feel anxious but i'm not that emotion and if we can create that mm-hmm. space in that space is a big chance to actually work with the emotion we can begin to question it become curious of it understand its root cause and even meditate with it get to know it through different practices when we think we are anxiety itself it's really hard to to do that so um, i definitely encourage people to create that space and i guess watch the language they use when talking about how they're feeling yeah oh i love that that that's just so powerful like i am not that i am so you say i feel sad i feel angry yeah instead yeah. of i am yeah 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 because yeah, yeah so i am tend to Yes, it's a slight word change, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, so powerful. <laughs> so I know you had a little activity for us um, that you wanted to get everyone to take part in um, that will help us become more aware um, mm. of the emotion. So would you like to talk us through the activity? Yeah, the, it's a very simple activity i often get asked a lot like how do i sit with my emotions or how do i meditate on my emotions and i think um i came to meditation with the same question um and i think people often expect some grandiose meditation with this big answer and i was hoping for that as well like show me how do i do this please and when i learned the technique i'm like it's quite boring but it's effective (laughs) so um and all it requires us to do is just sit just literally sit with the emotion because when an uncomfortable emotion arises, we tend to want to distract ourselves. And there's plenty of distractions in the world that we can find, whether um, we, we think they're helping us or, or not, um, or we avoid it. And we wait until it becomes too much and then we then let it out. So in this simple practice, if you're feeling a certain emotion at the moment, and if you so happy to indulge me here, we can practice this together. Yep. Um, all we have to do is just simply close down the eyes and it only takes a couple minutes to do. And perhaps there is emotion that you've been feeling recently. Is there something that comes to mind for you? It's probably frustration. Frustration. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we can work with that in this two to three minute window where we can just take a couple of breaths to ground ourselves and feel into the body. And then perhaps you can visualize the source of that frustration if it feels comfortable to do so. You're just noticing it. You're not creating a story about it. Not getting caught up in the thoughts of it. And as you visualize that source of frustration, you might feel the frustration arise in your body. And just see if you can pinpoint the location that the frustration resides within you. It might be in the chest, like a tightening of the chest, or it might be a knot in the stomach. And wherever that frustration lives, just gently place your hand on that spot. Now I invite you now just to breathe into the source of that frustration. Breathing deeply in and slowly out. You may notice there's a color or a texture or a shape associated with that frustration. Mm -hmm. 
perhaps as you breathe in, you can breathe a white light into that area of frustration. And as you breathe out, allowing the frustration to fade. Breathing in that white, bright, healing light. And as you breathe out, it's allowing frustration to fade. Just knowing that it's okay to have felt that way. Perhaps even offering yourself a sense of forgiveness for feeling that way. Did you sit with it for a few more moments? And you might notice as the frustration fades, it has a message for you. There was a gift contained somewhere within the frustration itself. Perhaps it wanted you to uphold a boundary or let go of an expectation. Is there a message there for you? You can just thank the frustration for the message and let it go. Just noticing how your body's feeling. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. That was really nice. <laughs> I feel like when you said, see the frustration, I, I was really like, I was getting really angry <laughs> as yeah. I was seeing it. But then mm. working through that, taking the deep breaths, allowing myself, you know what though, sitting with it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And it never is. Like, mm. I'm glad you said that. Literally uh, everyone I've ever worked with over the last few years, there's always a response. So I ask, like, oh, how bad was that to sit with the emotion? Like, oh, it wasn't that bad. And we have all this fear associated with our emotions. But nothing can happen to you if you just sit with it. It can't do anything to you. It's just a feeling in the body. The worst that can happen is it, it stays the same, which isn't that bad because you're feeling that way already anyway. So, yeah, exactly. yeah it can only get better. Yeah, yeah, wow. Oh, I'm definitely going to use that practice again. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, oh, thank you so much for sharing that <laughs> with no us all. And, and did a message come through for you? Yeah, take your time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Just like, yeah. yeah. Just... And that's a, yeah. And that's oh, the big thing on, with devotion. Sorry. sorry. Um, there's always a message at the bottom of them. If we can just sit with them long enough, we'll, we'll get the message. Um, they're actually trying to point us in the right yeah. direction. But it's like yeah. we're just clouded all the time. It's like, it's like yeah. anger. <laughs> it's just clouding <laughs> our vision. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, this has been awesome. Is there anything that you wanted to add or share that we may have hmm. out on? I think one important thing as well when it comes to um, working with, firstly, uncertainty itself is the fact that we, yeah, it's a very uncertain time, but life is inherently uncertain. It's always uncertain. And often people will say, like, I don't know how to get through this uncertainty. And I often call bullshit on that. I don't know if I can say bullshit on this podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> because it, life's always uncertain and, and you've arrived at this moment, it means you've always got through it. So mm -hmm. just look to your past for evidence if you're not sure if you can get through difficult times. And if you look at those difficult times you've got through, you'll find you've always become stronger as a result. So don't believe that voice in your head that says you can't get through it because you've never not gotten through it before. Yeah. 
But if you do feel like there's a big sense of overwhelm right now and there's a lot of emotion there, A, you can try and break them down one at a time rather than trying to deal with them all at once. But we also all need support and help sometimes to work with it. So even though that practice is here in this podcast, you don't have to do it alone either. So if you feel like there's that sense of overwhelm, then definitely I encourage everyone to um, seek the support they need. Yeah, 100%. And even, um, yeah, definitely follow Pat on Instagram because <laughs> he, <laughs> um, he gives little tips. Um, and I think also like what I love that you do too is just kind of call bullshit sometimes um, <laughs> and, you know, make not make light of the situation but just help people work through the situation, um, which is what I've noticed you do in the past few weeks. Um, so definitely guys, you need to follow Pat on Instagram. He's also pretty funny too, um, <laughs> with his reels. So, I'll yeah. try my best. Oh, well, when you've got all this time in lockdown. <laughs> yeah, so much time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've got to make myself um, laugh somehow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. You know, being grateful and looking at, you know, what we do have, um, at the moment. And yeah. I think just being able to slow down. Like, I don't know what it's going to be like when we get to go back out and see people and stuff, but I feel like that's going to be, that's going to be more full on than just staying at home. <laughs> I don't know. I just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I feel that. I feel like every time we get out of lockdown, those first couple of weeks, the calendar fills up very quickly. And that can yeah. also be a very overwhelming feeling as well for people. So there's like getting out of lockdown isn't always a relief for everyone. So we have to take that into account when like talking to people and showing compassion for people who actually felt more comfortable locked down that that people are like that. So yeah, it, it, it's weird on both ends, but we've got to try and find that balance. Yeah. A hundred percent. Oh, hmm. this has been such a, such a great chat, Pat. Oh, that rhymed. I was like, <laughs> oh, Pat, Pat. it's been such a great chat. Um, and thank you so much for coming again on the show and the activity, the meditation that you gave to us. I'm sure you're going to help so many people with that. You definitely helped me, something I'm definitely going to cool. listen back on. <laughs> no, I'm glad. Cool. Thank you for having me again. I really appreciate it. So do you want to quickly share with everyone where they can find you on socials? Uh, yeah, on Instagram, it's as easy at, at Pat Chirico. Um I think that's the main place that I'm at. You can also find me um, at Tiff and Pat, which is some work me and my wife Tiff do together as well, also mm-hmm. on Instagram. Yeah, you guys need to check it out, especially during these times when you need to connect with people too. Yeah, um, it's exactly. It's a great little community yeah. that you guys have um, that I'm fortunate to be a part of. Um, yeah. So, yay, thank you so much again, Pat. Sure, thank you.